think it's on there. Welcome back to Bulls Mac, everybody. <clears throat> Out of town today, uh, filming a wedding. I'm not going to tell you where because I'm not finished filming the wedding yet, but I had to... Uh, I had to get this out. Uh, I'm not one to blog. Bullsmack doesn't blog. I usually, I usually like to give you a bit of a show, a bit of production value. Uh, if I like to vlog, I do it every single day. The fact that I don't like, I don't like to blog every single day. I don't think I'm that important. Not to say I don't think other people aren't important that do vlog. It's just, uh, you know, it's, it's not for me. If I was younger and didn't have to, you know, fight to work, uh, I probably vlog more, but I don't. But anyway, I got my little mobile kit here, as you can see in the background. Uh, all that is is a pre-rendered background from my computer. Slapped it on a USB, put it on the background in this TV, and voila, I got a bull smack background, a little bit of production value, like I usually try to do. Um, the reason I'm vlogging right now is because, you know, I just had... I'm still having. It's just the weirdest fucking day, people. It's the weirdest fucking day. And uh, I, I need to get this out before I say it to the wrong person. Because, again, I'm on site. Uh, it's a job I have not been paid for yet. I do expect to get paid for it. It's just uh, drama. Drama came into this one real fucking quick. Uh, to give you a little bit of background, what happened is... <clears throat> I have a very small company. A very small company. And my company is basically... Uh, three cameras and a laptop. And basically, I just, you know, I try to work a little bit of magic around that. Um, to the point where, you know, I, I pull off some very decent production values. But I got to a point where I was able to hire another photographer. Not because I'm getting, you know, older, but because uh, when I was younger, I got more of a reaction from people. Not only do I want to get like, oh, congratulations and all that shit like that. You know, I, I send myself out to get those goal comments, those amazing anecdotes uh, that you'll get from your f best friends and family. Uh, that's who I go after. And, and then I intercut those interviews with the actual footage of the wedding. So what you end up with is actually something that is a little bit entertaining and something that you want to watch. Because when you film weddings just from beginning to end, top to tail, and a bride watches that wedding, they're like... What happened to my special day? This isn't my day. My day was magical. See, all brides feel that way about your day. You all think it's all so wonderful. But when the wedding is over and you're watching the video of it, when you're watching the wedding video of it, you're watching what everybody else is watching, which is a whole lot of fucking nothing. Like, just get to the kiss already. Just get to the fucking kiss. Uh, that's what people come for. So, I mean, the reason it doesn't feel magical is you shoot a top tail is because it wasn't magical. You're high on your own ass. Like, you love that day. That day is all about you. Everything. Everybody here. All, all your... The cakes, the dresses, the flowers, everything. They are here, okay, because of you. This is your special day. So, again, you're high on your own ass. Everything's magical. But to everybody else, it's just sitting in a church for an hour. There's nothing exciting about it. So when you shoot a wedding, no matter, no matter how good it is, no matter how good the wedding video is, the bride is always pissed off. She's never satisfied. <laughs> the video looped. Did the video loop? I got it on loop. See? It works. Production value. Rear projection still works. Uh, anyway, um... When you get that, you know, you don't get that same feeling when you're watching your wedding video top to tail. But if I fill it with a bunch of stuff that you didn't even know was coming at you, like an anecdote from when you were in high school or an anecdote from, you know, your in-laws who have lots of nice, colorful things to say about you, good or bad, or, or maybe they're just trying to rib you, uh, then you're getting something. You know, you're getting a thrill out of it. You're getting some entertainment. So while it doesn't match... The magical feeling you had and the magical vibe you had the entire time on your wedding day, you're still getting something that you enjoy that, that is on a different level than what people normally just do. I mean, the lazy way of doing it that everybody fucking does it. I mean, anyone can pick up a camera and shoot a wedding. Anybody can fucking do it. You got to do it with some finesse, though. You got to do it with some finesse, though. So... After the first few weddings that I did, I was able to afford some more cameras. You get better production value. Hell, I was able 
to hire a young photographer, 19 years old, just entering a film program. You know, he doesn't know what to expect. It's a dream job of his life. I got him off Kijiji. And see, he doesn't know anything about the bull smacking. He doesn't know anything about that. He just knew in his little young mind, oh my God, I'm getting paid to do something. You know, you know, all you suckers in school, fuck you, because this weekend I'm going out and I'm getting paid professional rates to shoot a wedding. 19 years old, 19 year old man. Like you, you, you're on the top of the fucking moon with that. And the reason I got someone so youthful and so vibrant is because that's the way I used to be when I was younger. I know, you know, it's hard to get the gold comments when you're getting older. Because people take one look at you and they just make up their mind about you. You know, Blah. you know, he's like that. I don't talk to that. Nah. You know, and if you're that type of person, you're a fucking cunt. You are a miserable cretin of a fucking human being if you can't go through your day without tearing the smile off somebody else's face. So let me tell you the story about this kid. So we shot the wedding. Everything went fine with the wedding. Uh, the wedding shot on a beach. Uh, they basically had like um, a little made up fence. Like the fence was maybe two feet high and we were all corralled in there like cattle. But it, it, instead of a chapel, it was just this little makeshift garden. And of course, when the wedding's over, everybody steps over the little tiny white wooden fence and they go out to the beach and whatnot. And, uh, and they just talk and they mingle. Now, it's hot. It was hot this day. Like, it's really fucking hot today. And, like, I, I've been on the mainland. I mean, I come from Newfoundland where you're getting hit with a breeze and some wind from every single direction most of the time. So when I came up, I mean, I, I'm, I've been up here since 2000. Two, I've been up here on the mainland, the mainland as we call it, since 2002. And I still haven't been able to get used to the humidity. I sweat my fucking ass off. I sweat my ass off. So I hired this kid, one, because I knew he was just youthful and vibrant, you know? And when you have that personality and you haven't been tainted by shitty people yet, uh, that resonates. That just... That just fucking exudes from your soul and for what i want him for was to get some gold comments some gold congratulations some anecdotes that's what i paid him for because i knew by the end of this wedding i was going to be sopping in sweat to the point where people would just take one look at me and be like <laughs> like Ugh. I fucking talk to that guy so i got this kid and i'm not saying his name because again i'm going to tell you the story about what happened here um, um, so what happens to this kid, this kid, we film the wedding, I'm a sweaty mess, and I'm like, look, man, the reception's not for another five hours, they got married in the morning, uh, the bride wants to have the type of after party that takes place until two o'clock in the morning, whole bunch of young people, again, a great bride and groom, I can't say better things about you, uh, but I have, I, I just have to talk about this, because I, I mean, we like ragging on young people all the time, saying that they're oversensitive and stuff like that. But what happened to this kid just pisses me off to no fucking end. Just no fucking end whatsoever. Um, so I'm a sweaty mess. I decide, look, I'm going to I'm gonna part because, I mean, I can't interview people with fucking sweat coming off my face and I'm drenched. I'm just like, how do you feel about the people getting married? <laughs> Is it wonderful? <laughs> I'm not on crack right now. I'm not a drunk. There's nothing wrong with me. I just sweat out of my face like this all the fucking time. I'm a fucking sweaty John Wick. You know, I didn't want people to think that. So, you know, I'm like, well, fuck. I'm paying. I'm paying this guy to shoot this camera with me. Let's trust him to do his job. You know, I'm sweating anyway. I'll go out. I'll go have a good work and workout. The elliptical kicked my fucking ass, man. I'd like... Bit of loop again. All right. So basically... You know, um, you know, I'm a sweaty mess. I'm paying this kid. Uh, I'm going to go work out. Then I'll get a shower. I'll be able to change in my room. Uh, I mean, that's what everybody wants to do. It's hot today. Everybody wants to get out of their formal dress wear and get into their more casual dress wear for when the nightclub party hits, which I can't fucking wait for because these people are 28 years old and it's going to be a party, folks. It's going to be a fucking party. So I can't wait for it. But there's already a bad vibe. There's a bad taste in everybody's mouths. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, now, this, this kid that I hired, he's, he's got a red 
he's got a gray suit, but he's got a red satin shirt underneath, like like really crisp red satin shirt. So, you know, uh, I got to put a hat on him. While we don't wear hats in the chapel or during the service, as soon as the service is outside and we're outside the church or the chapel or just outside the area where they get married, I immediately slap the hat on with the ball cap because I tell people before they come into the wedding, you know, if you have any anecdotes, if you have anything to say, as soon as the big stuff's over, look for the person with the light bulb baseball cap and bam, they will take all your story, all your information. And I do this because when you're, a, when you're a videographer and you go from person to person, you're like, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? You're always going to get those people at the worst fucking time. And even if they do have something to say, uh, at that point, you might make them feel insecure and they'll just, you know, they'll shy away and say, nah, not right now. And then later on, they're too drunk and not right now happens never. So... Anyway, he's got the red satin shirt on. I put my red ball cap on him. And, and again, th this isn't to say how out of touch I am. This is, this is to say how fucking miserable people can be on other people's days. Like, if the day isn't about you, there's people out there that just make it about them in a big, bad fucking way. And they don't care. They don't fucking care. So I'm coming up from the gym. The groom is in the hallway in front of my room. And he has my camera in his hand. The camera that I gave the kid to shoot with. He's got the camera. And he's got a red ball cap in his hand. And I'm sweaty mess coming up. You know, just want a fucking shower. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, ah, oh, man, what did this kid do? Kid didn't do anything. Uh, I gave that kid the red hat because it matched his suit and he looked fucking bomb in it. You know, I could have gave him the gray hat because it matched his jacket, his suit jacket, but it didn't, it didn't, it looked crisper. It looked crisper to give him the red hat. That and every other hat I got, I'm after fucking sweating it. Like my blue hat, my black hat, my white hat, my pinstripes. Like all the color hats that I got, I'm after sweating in them profusely. The red hat is the cleanest one I got. So I gave him the red hat. Um, and, and, and I mean, people came up to him with the gold comments. And again, this is why I picked this kid. I picked the kid because he's been... Because I picked the kid because he hasn't been tainted by pieces of shit and meddling assholes of the world yet. And I picked him because it just... It emanates from his pores how pure and nice this kid is. And when I employ people like that, I get better comments back. I mean, because everybody judges you at face value, right? So usually when I was working by myself when the wedding was over, I was. I was a little bit of a, you know, a sweaty wreck or whatnot. I mean, it's hard to get taken seriously if you're sweating your ass off but i mean again it's so hot it was so hot today and uh anyway so what happened was the kid is on metaphorical mind crack okay he's high on life he's so fucking happy to have a microphone and a camera in his hand getting these golden comments from people like how do you feel today you know how do i get this you know asking the w5s no close ended questions he's giving me the gold this woman comes up to him and she says, do you know what that hat symbolizes? Um, so she thought the red hat was an interpretation of a MAGA hat. And I'm, I'm getting this from, the, I'm getting this from the, the groom. Well, the husband now, you know, because he's married. You know, uh, the fact that he even had to come talk to me uh, pisses me off. Pisses me off. This is his day. This is his wife's day. Like, who the fuck are you? So this woman comes up, and the first thing she says, she puts her finger in his fucking face. You know, from what I hear, I'm getting it from the groom. She puts, and again, I'm mad. I'm mad right now. I'm, I'm mad. I'm mad right now. I'm sequestering myself in my fucking room. Um, so she came up, she put the finger in his face. She's like, do you understand what that hat represents? And the kid just said, yeah, it's... Prevalent Mind Studios, you know, actually proud, actually proud to say he was with Prevalent Mind Studios, you know, you know, the light bulb, I'm, I'm with Prevalent Mind Studios. 
Um, she said, that hat represents racism. That hat represents disgusting people. And I am disgusted that you would wear it. We're in Canada. I have a red hat. I have a white pinstripe hat. I have a black pinstripe hat. I have a gray with a charcoal beak hat. I have a solely gray hat. You know, I have these color hats because I bought them one at a time. And every time I went into lids, I just got a different fucking color. Okay? It has nothing to do with MAGA hats or Trump. Okay? I bought the red hat on Canada Day because our national colors in Canada are red and white. So I bought a red and white hat. And I'm thinking now, like, I wish to fucking God I gave this kid the charcoal hat because it all got taken out of context. Um, so anyway, she berates the kid. I don't know anything more than that. I, I know <clears throat> the kid tried to explain. He had no idea that that's what the hat represented. Again, that's not what the hat represents. But this kid is so fucking sensitive. Again, untainted. He's a, so afraid of offending anybody that he actually believes this woman's bullshit and immediately takes off the red hat and being like, oh my God, I, I didn't realize this is what this represents. You know, on the word of this 66-year-old cunt. Okay? What are you doing coming to anybody's wedding trying to make a scene? Okay? He had that ball cap on so people could identify him and get to him quickly. Okay? If you got a comment, everybody's wearing fucking suits. Everybody's in suits and dresses. Everybody looks exactly the fucking same. How do you make a photographer look different than everybody else running around with their fucking cameras? You put a fucking light bulb ball cap on their head and you tell everybody who wants to tell a story or give a congratulations to the broom, groom, bride and groom when the wedding is over, you say, look for the man wearing the light bulb baseball cap. And everybody were having the time of their lives doing that. Everybody fucking got it. Nobody else at this wedding made that correlation. They just saw, oh, there's the, there's the ball cap. Go talk to that guy. So the kid maybe got about 20 minutes of people before this woman shut him down to the point where he was fucking crying. And, and another thing, this is the other thing. I don't want to say his name, you know, I'm um, after telling people he's crying. The thing is, I'm not telling you why he's crying. Like, we're on this kick a lot of times where you're like, oh, millennials are so oversensitive. You know, you call me a millennial. I'm not oversensitive. I got thickest fucking skin in the world. You can, you can have a whole online campaign against me and brandish lies about me like a lot of people do. And I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. And then people say, well, you're a sociopath because you don't give a fuck. I'm like, fine. Then I'm a sociopath because I won't let anybody under my skin anymore. If that makes me a sociopath, then fine. I'm a fucking sociopath. The difference between me and this kid was, and the reason why I hired this kid, is because he was sensitive. You know, that's why I got the kid. You know? So people could tell there wasn't an evil bone in his body. There wasn't a bad, disrespectful bone in his body. Go talk to that kid. He's got nothing but fucking rainbow shooting out of his ass, son. Okay? Anyway, this woman, I guess she had her finger in his face. She's calling him out. She's calling him a race. She's doing all this, you know? So for five minutes, she turned this whole fucking day about herself. And again, every guest right now is talking about this. Every guest. So... You know, the kid's in his fucking room right now. I don't know what I'm going to fucking do. You know, I got three and a half hours to cheer him up. But the thing is, he's not crying because you offended him. He's not crying because you were mean to him. He is crying because he is so broken up about the fact that he could ever possibly inadvertently offend someone. That's why he cried. That's why he put down the camera and put down the hat and said, I'm fucking done with this. Thinking like I set him up. Anyway, I'm told... Anyway, the groom gave me back my camera and the hat. I went to talk to the kid. I told him, I was like, look, man, it's we're Canada. Red and white, again, telling you everything I told you right now. You know, I didn't mean for this to happen to you. But the thing is, this kid is so optimistic. You know, like... 
he's getting paid a professional rate for doing what he wants to do. And you destroyed him. You immediately shut him down. I remember what it was like to be that optimistic kid with not a, you know, with, with you know, just entirely, like every bone in my body was good. I didn't have a mean-spirited bone in my body. And I remember what it was like. And I remember what it was like to have people shut you down, take you down a peg. Because they just could not have the day go on. Holy fuck, it's still hot in this room. I'm probably going to have to get another shower when this is all done. But, uh... <clears throat> But, I mean, you're shutting this kid down. And all he wanted to do was do the best possible job he could. And you got this kid a fucking emotional wreck right now. Because he thinks, you know, he thinks what everybody, he thinks what everybody in a fucking bubble thinks. He thinks everybody thinks he's a racist. He thinks he offended everybody. The thing is, he only offended this one miserable <laughs> I've been told by the groom... You know, tell him not to worry. Uh, she's not coming to the reception. How amazing is that? You know, what a surprise. That the fucking old curmudgeon bitch that had to take down some young dude for just doing his job and being happy with a smile to do it. You know? How fucking miserable are you? You must reuse your fucking tea bags when company comes over. Like, that's how fucking miserable you gotta be. To try and take people like that down a peg. This kid just wanted to do the best job he could possibly do. He was proud to put on that hat. And I was proud to put the hat on him. If you have a company, if you have any kind of company with your logo, you got a t-shirt, you got a slogan, you got any kind of organization whatsoever. When you have other people don that t-shirt or don that hat, that's amazing sense of pride. Later on, like, as I'm saying this now, I, I'm thinking of pictures that I can superimpose over what I'm saying to give you an idea of how proud I am to have my own company and put my hat on this kid, and I got this old <laughs> shutting him down on me. Paying him a full wage so he could come out to his first job and just have the disappointment of his fucking lifetime. He was having the time of his life before that fucking woman showed up. So I got to go talk to this kid. I got three hours to have a beer with him and just get him to calm down and come back to that, you know, come back to that super nice kid that was always glossing the pearly whites because that's who I hired. That's who I fucking need him because of this old bitch. I don't have who I hired anymore. Shut down his personality. Shut down the good things about it. And instead of giving me anecdotes... And gold comments. These people are going to want to talk about this old bitch now. Wait, someone, someone knocking on the door here. Give me a second. <laughs> um, that's probably the best fucking news I had all day. The bride feels so bad about what happened to this kid that, um... <laughs> Uh, the gift that this woman gave her, the wedding gift uh, that this woman gave uh, the bride and groom, um, it's been donated. And she's asking me, like, is it okay if I give him some money? I'm like, you should be at his door. Actually, I should have fucking told her that. I should have just told her that. Anyway, I want to give it to him because if you can't have a beer with somebody to calm him down, at least I can give him some money and say, look, man, like, not everybody feels the same way as that old bitch, okay? Not everybody. That old bitch isn't even going to be there. Everybody else loves your personality, buddy. Loves your personality. So it's going to feel great to give them that money. That's for sure. Uh, and that's just a class act. That's a class act, you know? But it, it's also pissing me off because, like, this has been going on for an hour and 20 minutes now. Like, people are running around like chickens with their heads cut off for an hour and 20 minutes now trying to solve this situation because of what some old bitch took 10 minutes out of her life to do. And the fact that this, this, this woman has to come to my room with money 
to apologize for all this. Um, like, way to go. Way to go. You made this whole fucking day about you. You know? Pe people are going to be... Uh, people are going to be applauding this kid more than the bride and groom now. Either the bride and groom are applauding this kid more than their own selves. Like, you, you spent all this money to get a resort and get people down here and give them all hotel rooms, give them all this shit. And you got this miserable old fucking... But anyway, like, I, I, I just had to get that out. I had to fucking get that out. Like, get out of your fucking bubbles. Get out of your fucking bubbles. And when you do get out of your fucking bubbles... Shut your mouth, because you're in the real world then. You're playing on the same field as everybody else. Okay? And I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be branded something you're not. And I, you think I don't know? I don't know. I got people I got people locally calling me stuff like white trash and stuff. I know they haven't watched the Bull Smack, because the Bull Smack, all the Bull Smack does is constantly preach equality among diversity. That's all the Bull Smack fucking talks about. There's a reason why there's a bulb on this side and a bulb on that side. One bulb is dark. One bulb is bright. You know, I'm always in the middle. Because I'm. that's the visual aesthetic I'm giving you. I'm telling you, I don't represent the left or the right. I represent the middle. So it's very easy for me to realize who doesn't watch the show or who just makes up their own fucking bullshit about me. Because I'm like, you obviously don't fucking watch it then. Okay. But that's besides the point. I know what it's like to be called something you're not. And this kid didn't deserve it. You know, he has plenty of time in his long career to be able to understand what kind of cunts people can be. I'm looking like a fucking crazy Edward Scissorhands right now. But, uh, you know... Yeah, I'm definitely going to need another shower. Another shower. A little bit more conditioner. Fuck, I need a haircut. But anyway, I just thought I'd, uh, I'd put that out there. You know, uh, I can't imagine a worse, more random fucking thing that could possibly happen. And I mean, this is the first time I paid an employee ever. Ever. This is the first time I've ever done a shoot where I wasn't completely by myself. Ever. And I was hoping it would be a wonderful experience. Trust somebody else to do their job and do it well. I've seen the kids work. I knew he wasn't going to blow it. And somebody else blew it for him. So I just want to talk about that left and right. You got to get out of your fucking bubbles. And when you do get off the fucking internet and come out of your bubbles, realize that you're in the fucking real world where everybody comes to play on the same field. Okay? When you're on your internet, or when you're watching TV, or in your fucking living room, and all that shit. You're not playing on the same field as everybody else. You're playing on your own field, with all your own players that are just playing touch football with you. People like me that are in the middle, that demand that everybody else that come into the real world all play by the same set of rules. People like me, which is the majority, guess what? The middle makes up the majority. The middle decides elections. The undecided decide what fucking life we're going to live. The middle waits to see how fucking crazy the left is going to be. The middle waits to see how crazy the right's going to be. And they make up their mind based on who's fucking crazier. Who's fucking crazier right now? Who's talking like a fucking lunatic right now? I'm going to side with the other people then. That's how the middle works. Okay, so if anything, I'm just saying, get out of your fucking bubbles. And when you're out of your fucking bubbles, don't make everything about you. You're not on your social fucking media platform where you got all your followers and you can go at, 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 and get like emotional support from a whole bunch of fucking people that you've never met before that all are as highly offended over things that have nothing to fucking do with them. I mean... Act accordingly, man. The real world, whatever battle you are fighting, whatever social justice battle you are fighting for or against while you're online is not fucking happening 
in the outside world when you leave your house and come outside into the fucking sunshine with everybody else that doesn't give a fuck about you. So keep your fucking comments to yourself and let a young smiling kid that's looking fresh as fuck in his red fucking hat be able to take a picture. And again, like, I like making fun of the young for being a little oversensitive. But this is sensitivity in a different way. I mean, this is a young man who's basically taught, like, he's offensive just for being a man. Like, that's the generation he's in. Like, he's, he's, merely offen he's offensive merely because he was born. You know, he has to deal with all of that fucking shit throughout the day. So to have this kid actually think that he was wrong. To have this kid feel that he actually had to apologize to this woman makes me fucking irate, son. Makes me fucking irate, people. And he's crying because he's offended. He's not offended. He's crying because he thinks he offended you. Who gives a fuck if you're offended? You're a fucking nobody. You're a worthless, meddling fucking nobody. And I'll stop it there before I get too upset. Because, like, the kid got some money. The kid got some money. I can't wait to give him some money and say, look, man, this is what happens to good people. You may think what happened to you was bad, but guess what? That old bitch's money is yours. And on another note, the bride told me if I can find any fucking footage of you in there where I can cut you out to do so. So I'm going to fucking delete you from this fucking day, which you tried to make your own. Anyway... That's all I got to say today. Uh, I'm more on my vlog now. I'm not using my alter ego. Blah, blah, blah. I look like fucking crazy Edward Scissorhands. But, you know, I just had to get that out. Had to tell somebody. Had to tell somebody. Anyway, party tonight. Woo! Thanks for tuning into the Bulls Mag, everybody.